All right, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to deploy your application and also set up a custom domain for that application using a platform called Vercel. Now, for those that haven't heard of Vercel, it's a hosting platform that easily allows you to deploy an application with only a few clicks. It's a great platform that comes with quite a few features and has become my go-to for deploying my applications recently. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do if you haven't done so already is create a new GitHub repository for the application that you're going to want to deploy. We'll be using this repository later to connect to Vercel to deploy the application. With that created, we can open up the project that we're going to want to deploy within VS Code and start off by initializing a new Git repository. We'll want to start by adding all the files to the staging area with the command git add period. Next, we'll go ahead and make a commit with all the files that we have in the staging area. We'll then need to add our Git remote to connect this local Git repository to the one that we just created over on GitHub. And then lastly, we'll just push up all of our changes. Now back over on GitHub, you're going to see we have the project now stored here inside of this repository. So next, if you haven't done so already, you're going to want to create a Vercel account. The signup process is fairly simple. You'll start by selecting a plan type, which most of you watching this video will probably be opting for the hobby type. Then you're going to want to enter your name and click on continue. Next, you can continue with one of the following accounts or use your email, but I definitely recommend using GitHub as it will then connect your Vercel account to GitHub, making deployments a breeze. All right, now once you have your account created in the top right hand corner of the dashboard, you're going to want to click on add new and then select project. If you chose GitHub, you should then see the screen allowing you to connect your GitHub repos to a new project. And for this example, I'll be selecting the repository that we just went ahead and created. So once you selected the repository, it'll then take us to the project configuration. Now the cool thing about Vercel is it auto detects a framework that we're using based on a repository and it handles all the default configuration for us. So we don't need to touch any of this and we can just simply click on deploy. And it's as simple as that with only a few clicks, we were able to deploy this application. Now, one issue that you may have that I have for this project is that I'm using Supabase and we have some environment variables that are missing since these don't get pushed up with our repository. So to add these to our project, we'll want to select on continue to dashboard and then click on the settings tab. From here, we can select on the environment variables tab and here you're able to add those environment variables. And for the sake of keeping my values safe, I'm just going to blur these out. Now, after you have added those, you're just going to want to rebuild the application so that it now accounts for those environment variables that you just went ahead and added. And once that is done deploying, you're going to see we have a preview of the site. And if you click on one of the domains that Vercel provides us, it'll then take us to the application. All right, so the domains that Vercel provides are fine for testing. However, if you're ready to push your site to production, you're going to want to add a custom domain. Now you can purchase domains from services like GoDaddy or even Namecheap, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to show that exact process and I've already went ahead and purchased a domain from GoDaddy. Now, once you have your domain purchased back on Vercel, you'll want to head back to the settings tab and then select on domains. And inside of this input, you're just going to want to add the domain that you purchased and then select add. And we'll just be leaving the recommended configuration and again, we'll select add. Once that processes, you're going to see we have some invalid configuration. So as you can see, we need to add the following A record and C name record to our domains DNS. Now over on GoDaddy within the DNS management, we'll start off by selecting add new record. The type for this record will be A, the name for this will be the at symbol, and then the value that we're going to enter is going to be the one provided to us from Vercel. And then we can just select on save. Next, we're going to configure the CNAME record. Now on GoDaddy, we already have one for the type of www. So instead of adding a new record, what we can do is just select on edit. And then we can update this value to the one provided to us by Vercel. And the last thing we'll want to do is remove the conflicting A record that has a value of parked. Now, what we could have done instead of adding a new A record is we could have just went ahead and updated this one, which probably would have been quicker, but it doesn't really matter. Now, once you have those values updated, it can take up to 48 hours to actually update and be configured. But for me, it took around five to 10 minutes. And once it has updated, you should see now both of these domains have a valid configuration. 
And now if we click on the link to our domain, it's going to open up our deployed application. And what's also really cool about Vercel is if you look here in the URL, you can see we have this lock icon, which is informing us that our site is SSL certified. So if we head back over to our project settings, and I believe if we click on edit and we can view more DNS records here for our domain, and if we scroll down, you can see that we have the SSL certificates and by default, Vercel will automatically uh, issue these and it's going to renew them for your custom domains. So anyways, it's as simple as that, not only to host your application on Vercel, but also configure a custom domain. But anyways, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're new for more content like this. And if you are interested in learning about Nux3, I am working on a premium project-based course that will teach you how to build applications using Nux3. So if you are interested, be sure to head over to learnnux.dev and join the waitlist so that way you'll get updates as to when the course is going to be live. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.